Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we are super happy to have you here, and we just ask that you bring an open mind and heart to your listening experience and to be prepared to explore vantage points that I'm convinced will help shift or solidify your current understanding of the ultimate nature of reality. While listening, you'll be exposed to inspiring, empowering, and unifying perspectives that I'm highly confident will yield stellar results in your life if you opt to try them on for size. Also, at Optimistic.tv, we have officially begun releasing the first few episodes of our new late-night-style, consciousness-elevating video variety talk show, Optimistic, which features live visionary art, soul-share interviews, retreat guests here at the Mystic Manor, as well as live musical performances. I'm also super excited to announce that we are currently making plans to release the rest of season one on my personal favorite online streaming service. So stay tuned to optimistic.tv to follow the unfolding development of this exciting optimistic expansion as we'll be posting more info and release dates there soon. And in the meantime, be sure to check out, of course, the first few episodes at optimistic.tv as well. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. So glad to be with you all yet again. Here we go. Another beautiful day in paradise floating in eternity. What shall we do? Hmm. I don't know. What do you want to do? (laughs) I know. I know what I want to do. I want to read a review. I'm going to dive right in, have a new review here on iTunes uh, that I'm, that I'm excited about. It definitely fuels my fire to continue doing this labor of love and putting this out to the world, teaching best what I most need to learn, right? Uh, Sharing, connecting, growing together. And uh, as you guys know, it helps us to reach new listeners. And we've been doing that a lot. If you, those of you on the Positive Heads Facebook group, um, know I posted, what, a month ago or so, we hit a million downloads. And now we're like, I don't know, we'll probably hit another million within another 30 days or so. So it's growing exponentially. And it is really thanks to you guys for continuing to share, tell friends, family, you know, reviewing on iTunes, uh, anywhere out there that uh, helps us to reach new people. And uh, this review came from Sunburnt Cave Dweller. And uh, the title is Timing. And it goes a little something like this. Positive Head Podcast came to me during a huge transition in my life. I was in the process of ending seven years of marriage and had to decide how I wanted to conduct myself. My intention in the beginning was to separate for a period in order to give us time away from the negative environment we had created. My former partner felt betrayed by this and made some drastic decisions involving our children. This turned what could have been a simple separation into a mess. But considering our history, we would have been hard-pressed to find an alternative way of communicating. As attorneys and family members gave advice and court dates came and went, I was battling to find my voice in the conversation. I'm a naturally easygoing, passive person, which has served me in many, but also led me to stray from my path. Amidst all of this, I happened to cross your podcast. You had just released the episode on the four agreements, and it led me to reevaluate how it was handling my divorce. It tapped into my soul. It woke me up to my true self and how I want to walk this earth. At that point, I was able to block out the noise surrounding me and staying true to myself. Wow. Letting go of expectations, assumptions, not taking things personally, and living up to your word relieved an incredible amount of pressure and negativity I was holding on to. Another piece to this life puzzle is I'm visually impaired and became so at the beginning of my marriage. So as I shifted my consciousness with the aid of positive head, I've been able to positively impact the separation process with my partner. So in the future, we can raise our children as co-parents. And I've actually shifted my mindset so much that I was able to walk into the doctor's office who had told me I would never drive a car again and be reexamined to find my optic nerves had improved to a point that could have my license reinstated. 
Thank you for reminding me every day to live with an open heart and mind. I so appreciate your labor of love, Alex. Wow, what a review. Thank you so much, Alex, for sharing your story and uh, taking the time uh, to to give a review, help the show to reach new people. And of course, you know, your story, wow, so super inspiring. Um, obviously, just, you know, completing that circle of love that I'm putting out into the world uh, by sharing in this way. I mean, this fuels my fire in such a way, and I'm so, so appreciative. And what, you know, what an inspiration. The fact that you have turned it all around, you started, I love how you shared that you blocked out what was happening around you and you tuned into your your inner voice, your inner power and what's happening. All kinds of magical things are happening, of course, right? You're, you're uh, healing yourself, you're shifting the dynamic with this separation. What a test that you passed. And of course, I'm playing a small role in that and I'm so grateful, but you've done this. You're the one who has chosen to, to seek out uh, higher perspectives and um, congratulations to you. What a, what an inspiration. Wow. All right. So moving right along, uh, let's see, what are we going to talk about today? Um, I had some questions that have been written. I've been getting a lot of really, really great questions lately. And of course, been answering some of those on the show. I think we'll continue with that um, with a, a great question, very relevant question that I believe a lot of people can relate to. Uh, that came in from Amy uh, maybe a few weeks ago, just getting around to it here. But Amy said, Hi, Brandon. I've been a listener for almost a year now and thoroughly enjoy the show. Before beginning my question, I would I want to take a moment and sincerely thank you for your dedication to helping us all become awakened, keeping us upbeat and bringing light to the world. Your podcast is my guilty pet pleasure while cooking dinner in the evenings, and I'm appreciative to be a member of your soul tribe. All. Well, I'm appreciative uh, that you are a member of uh, our soul tribe as well, right? <laughs> so moving right along. So on to a little background information in my question. While on my spiritual path over the past 15 years or so, I've listened to and read books and articles by countless spiritual teachers. The phrase, what you resist persist, has been spoken by many of them. And up until now, I have understood how this applies to various areas of life. However, with the current political climate and recent administrative changes, I've been pondering that phrase for the last few months. My question is this, if I or we meaning my fellow progressives, independents, and Democrat, Democrats, or generally socially just, sane, and loving people, chose, choose not to resist the new administration's vile treatment of people, the healthcare and education systems, the environment, etc., and do nothing to stand up for ourselves and our country, then we allow hate and unjust treatment to reign over us. And according to this teaching, if we do resist, then this hate and unjust, un, and unjust treatment will persist. Does what you resist persist still apply in this context? I have heard several spiritual leaders and teachers say that as light workers, we should send the new leaders love and compassion in hopes of turning their negativity and that this regime was destined to take charge in order to change in order for change to take place on a grander scale. I agree that these people need as much love as possible, but at the same time, I find it difficult to stand by silently and not show disapproval through activism. I have joined my local indivisible chapter via a progressive political meetup I joined last year, and I'm just now becoming beginning to become active in the resistance movement. Do you believe my actions are futile, as in the government must fall in order to be rebuilt as a more socially just governing body, or that some resistance is necessary to prevent hate from destroying our society? Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, both led resistance movements for the proper treatment and human rights of all people. Is resisting the new administration's agenda only going to cause the negativity to persist, or will it persist regardless? Are we really meant to be accepting of this type of behavior? Is being quiet condoning it? I know Abraham and Teal Swan have spoken on the subject, but I'm still having trouble believing I am, we, are not meant to make our voices and disapproval heard. By the way, I find it synchronistic that the actual name for the pushback to the new administration's agenda is the resistance movement and resist flags are now being flown on homes and resist t-shirts worn by members of the movement. I thought of your love of synchronicity when I realized how it played into what you resist persists. <laughs> synchronicity seemed to surface quite a bit in my life as well, which has always fascinated me. Thanks in advance for any feedback you may have. In love and light, Amy. I think this is a really interesting point that you make here, Amy, and uh, 
Well, first off, the question that you have is of such a valid question. It's one that it's such a fine line, right? Figuring out where and how to behave and where to put our energy. And uh, I got to say, I find it really interesting. You talked about the T-shirt, what you resist persists. Okay, if that's true, and uh, <laughs> let's say, think about that for a minute. If that's true, and we're going to wear T-shirts that say resist, um, and if a resisting causes it to persist, uh, is it helping, <laughs> right? And I, I totally, totally understand the point. I totally get it. And my thoughts are, uh, I have to go back to what you guys have heard me say time and time and time again. And I'm someone who is, can be very fiery and I've had to really get that under control in my life and learn how to channel all the energy that sort of courses through me, all that fire into a, into a direction that is, uh, building something up and not tearing something down or not fighting against something. And, you know, I've done so much fighting against things in my life. And, um, all it does is ever's done is really wear me out. Right. <laughs> and I'm slowly, but sure, surely learning to, uh, to, uh, you know, use my energy in a different way. And, you know, I, I think of a few different quotes here, uh, and some of one of which you've heard me say before by mother Teresa, you know, mother Teresa was once asked, she said, I was once asked why I don't participate in anti-war demonstrations. I said that I'll never do that. But as soon as you have a pro-peace rally, I'll be there. Uh, Lao Tzu said, by letting it go, it all gets done. The world is won by those who let it go. But when you try and try, the world is beyond winning. And uh, this is such, you know, such important wisdom. And what a great opportunity, Amy, to be faced with this issue. And I've touched on it a little bit months ago when the election first uh, happened. But uh, it's it's obviously something that is has caused so many people to uh, know what they want and to pronounce they, what they want and to uh, pronounce what they're against. And I, I have to say, you know, what your concern is, you know, if I if I spend my energy fighting against this, will it continue? And, uh, you know, I have to I have to say, I believe that's the case. I don't think that fighting it in any way. I think being for something and against something and against nothing is the best possible stance we can take. And uh, Martin Luther King Jr., I know you referenced in Gandhi, and I know that they, you know, implemented some peaceful protest, right? And uh, I get it. I understand it. And I think there was some benefit that happened. I think everything's happening for a, a very definitive reason. But what if all of our energy was put only into what we wanted to see more of. We allowed the these administrations, these uh, people that are are obviously off balance, not in sync with the the truth, and uh, you know the understanding that all is one. What's good for you is good for me. All is an extension of self. There's only one of us in the room. Everywhere I go, I'm there waiting for myself. Right? They don't know this. I'm pretty sure Donald Trump doesn't know this yet, and that's okay. That's a part of their path, and they. Uh, they are uh, supplying contrast and it's difficult to look. It's like, you know, look away from the, you know, the awful thing happening over here. That's hard to do. It's very hard to do, but your energy is so precious. And whenever you're spending it resisting, you're, you know, you're spending it in a way that empowers it. it. It just does. It gives it more life. You give it more attention where attention goes, energy flows, right? And so if you're giving it attention, when you pay attention to something, you're buying it, you're buying more of it. So why not take the perspective of, I'm going to take my precious life force and I'm going to put it in the direction of what I want to see more of and allow that administration to get back what it puts out because everything does. You can't put something else and put something out and not feel the energetic repercussions of it. So why do you need to help? We don't need to help in any way, shape or form. They'll do it all to themselves, right? That's the thing. They will defeat themselves because they don't understand the nature of the game of the reality in which they find themselves. They're, they're confused and ego has completely dominated uh these characters that you're referencing and it, you know man they they they're, they're going to they're eating their own tail 
And it's just a, t- a matter of time. I mean, even now, as I say this, there's all kinds of talk of impeachment. And it's like 60 days into this administration. It, it, the administration doesn't need your help. <laughs> the current beating it, it'll beat itself. No one, uh, you know, what are you going to be for? Where are you going to spend your precious, vital life force to uh, to dream up the world in which you uh, wish to manifest and call forth and step into as you step through dimensions, as you step through alternate realities with your vibration. It is your own personal universe, your own personal movie. You're the lead actor, the lead actress, the lead director in your own movie. As you step vibrationally, you will step into realities uh, uh, that mirror what you've what you've given attention and energy to. So let's not give attention and energy to versions where this administration causes you frustration and causes you pain and causes you to fight and causes you to lower your vibration. Let's instead turn turn our head, be wise enough. And what a great opportunity! What a great challenge to overcome the temptation to fight. Man, I get it. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> definitely get it. When you're a fiery soul, you're like ready to go to battle, but be a peaceful warrior. Put your, put your, that same energy into turn your head towards what you want. Turn your head, resist the temptation to turn your head towards that, which you don't want to see more of. And you referenced Teal. And I can't remember in the interview I did with Teal Swan, if she did reference this or not. It all runs together talking to so many amazing people, but uh, I don't know if she talked about it in the interview. That uh, we, you know, the time her and I uh, chatted uh, a month or so ago, but um, Abraham, of course, uh, I, I thought of Abraham because I'd heard Abraham speak on this before. And of course, I share clips uh, fairly frequently. So I went and looked and I found a really great one. Uh, this is uh, titled, I found it on YouTube. Uh, Abraham, help. This Trump government is making me crazy. A short little clip here. Let's take a listen. here in your physical format and as you are deciding to be a deliberate creator we want you to find the relief of finding the vibration of the true current that is you and as you do that what happens in the beginning as you meditate as you appreciate as you do those things that cause you to move consistently up the vibrational scale and you consistently are in vibrational alignment with who you are so you have that clarity and love flowing through you We know that when you focus upon things like this, it will make you crazy. In other words, you can't consistently achieve a vibration of connection to source and then focus upon things like that without it sort of ripping you apart. But as you make the decision to move up the vibrational scale and as it becomes increasingly important to you that you do feel good, you are not forsaking those who need you. In other words, then that is the thing that people worry about. They say, well, I am prosperous and I live in a wonderful land and I can have what I want and And so I feel guilty about not carrying the banner for the downtrodden. Somebody needs to carry the banner for the downtrodden. And we want to say to you that you cannot be in vibrational alignment with well-being and in vibrational alignment with the downtrodden. And the downtrodden cannot hear you when you are in vibrational alignment with well-being. That's what so many teachers mean when they talk to you about Jesus said the poor will be with us always and that's what he was talking about. In other words, you cannot change the vibration of others. You can only offer the vibration that is you. So what you're saying to us here, we hear you and feel you loud and clear. You're saying, I want to be in vibrational alignment with who I am, but when I focus upon the action of my government, I cannot be in vibrational alignment with who I am. And I resent them dramatically for what they do to others and even more important, what they are doing to me in my vibration. I like them better when they're on peacekeeping missions. I like them better when they're dropping food in places that need it. I like them better when they do things that make me proud to be affiliated with them. And we say, you're in big trouble when you tie the way you feel in with what anybody else does because you cannot dictate or control what they do, you see. Don't let anybody, not your government, not anybody, represent you. You represent you. You align with the energy that is you and don't ask of yourself the impossible. And the impossible that you're asking is, I've got to find a way to look at things that are horrible and like it. Can't do that. Or I've got to learn to like horrible things. 
can't do that. Or I've got to train myself to look where things feel good where I look. You can do that. And then you say, but I feel guilty about that. Because don't we need to do something about what's wrong in this world? Aren't we sure to repeat our mistakes if we don't look at them and find out what was wrong with them? And we say, actually, the contrary is true. You are sure to repeat anything that you continue to look at. And there will always be another Hitler. Because there is so much attention given to that, you see. There will always be another seeker of power who will, in a well-meaning attitude, seek to right the way for the majority by offering havoc to those with whom they disagree. And you just got to pull yourself up out of that. Now, there are a number of things that we would do if we were standing in your physical shoes to soothe you. Some things we would say are as follows. The pendulum swings Things change, public opinion changes, these things move slowly. Nothing ever happens to anyone or to any region that is not a vibrational match to the energy that surrounds it. It's not my job to vibrate for the world, but it is my job to vibrate for me. I can stand at my place of distance from this conflict, and I can see it, and I can feel the rockets of desires emanating from me for peaceful regions and for children living happily ever after. And when the desire is born within me, I will then put my attention upon that desire. In other words, go with the flow. Now, you heard us talking about make a decision and then line up with the decision. And the discomfort that you are feeling is because you've made a decision of how you want your government to be, but you're focusing upon how your government is. So you've decided how you would like it to be, but rather than lining up with how you'd like it to be, you're looking at what is. You're facing the truth of it. People do this all the time. They say, shouldn't I look at this because after all it is true? And we say, if you're looking at a truth that contradicts your alignment with what you want, now you are not an influence for the good that you want. You see, you cannot condemn the actions of your government and be in alignment with the desires that are being born out of your observation of what is happening. And there's a big difference between putting your head in the sand and just saying it's not my work, it's their problem, they'll have to deal with it, which is not pleasing to you and not what we are encouraging, and saying, I'm watching this, I hate what's happening, this rocket of desire is born from me, I want people to live in peace, I want us to get along, and turning your full and undivided attention to your vision. And we have to say to you that while that may seem like not very much action, it might not seem like very much influence. From our vantage point, when someone like you gets a whiff of what's going on and with reasonable willingness studies the event and feels the desires and opinions formulating within you, and then you line up with those desires by imagining it turning in the direction of what you're wanting, and you receive immediate soothing as you begin doing that. One like that is more powerful than millions who are just observing the conflict. Every person focused is emitting desires and source hears all of those desires. So in times of greater conflict, there is more cry going out of more people for more balance. And as one here and one there and one here and one there learns to focus in alignment with what they're asking for, those vortexes open wider. Those are the powers of influence, you see. So in short, you cannot condemn your government even when it's wrong and help anything. Yes. Thank you. Very Thank you. good. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Before we continue on with today's episode, I'd like to take a quick moment to tell you about our new sponsor, New Calm. As you all know, mindfulness and meditation are key components to being the best version of ourselves. However, I would say sleep is even more important because if we aren't well rested, our bodies can't repair themselves properly and we can't perform optimally or think as clearly. 
So when I first heard that the new Calm system has been clinically proven in over 1 million sessions to improve sleep and reduce stress without using drugs or side effects, I was excited to get it for my brother to give it a try because he has been having issues with his sleep for many years. The new Calm system is great because it uses cutting edge neuroscience and consists of three non-invasive and non-pharmaceutical items all of which are included in a monthly subscription that costs less than a daily cup of Starbucks, which will probably only keep you up at night anyway. So if you'd like to feel better rested and less stressed, head over to PositiveNewCalm.com, where Positive Head listeners will get 50% off a 30-day subscription of NewCalm, which also comes with a money-back guarantee. That's P-O-S-I-T-I-V-E-N-U-C-A-L-M allwineword.com. Check it out. So as always, Abraham delivers. You can't change the vibration of others. You know, no one represents you. Train to look where things feel good. You can do that. That is your job. That is the, that is what you're here to do. Train to look where things feel good. Uh, you're ch- you're sure to repeat anything that you look at. She talks about, you know, uh, study history, study history, you know, so we don't repeat it. It's the opposite, right? If you keep focusing on something, you're sure to repeat it. It's, you know, it's not your job to bi- vibrate for the world, but for yourself. Get yourself right. Focus on that and the world changes around you. There is no out there, out there. It's all a reflection of where you're at. Get yourself in the right vibrational state and watch the government, watch everything change as you literally shift uh, vibrationally, dimensionally into versions of of, uh, life on planet Earth that you want to see, right? That's what we're doing. We're literally stepping. We're, We're popping in and out of existence with every moment. Since I've been doing this podcast, I've, you know, since I started recording, I've flickered in and out of existence a trillion times. It's like, Every breath is you're born anew. You're, you, the particles that make you up are popping in and out of existence. You are constantly choosing where you shift into next, right? As she said here, you've decided how you'd like it to be, but you're looking at how it is. That's the trick. That's what everyone's, uh, you know, why everyone continues to create what they don't want. They're not understanding the rules of the game. Don't look at how it is if you don't like how it is. Use your imagination, this powerful tool that you are given to create worlds. You can't condemn something and be in alignment with, uh, with your desires. Turn your, you know, so much wisdom in this little quick talk. I love how she said here, you know, when someone gives, gets a whiff of what's going on and then you line up uh, with your desires anyway and imagine it turning as you want. And you, you, you receive soothing, right? Instantly, you can cause yourself to feel really good in that moment. That is more powerful than millions who are just observing the conflict or resisting the conflict. So much more powerful than resisting is getting yourself into a vibrational state where you feel soothing, you feel relieved in, in spite of everything uh, that's going on around you. Now you found power. You want to, you want to, uh, you know, overcome that ad- the administration. Do that. More powerful than millions. I believe that fully. You can't condemn your government even when it's wrong and help with anything. So hopefully this helps give a little perspective uh, on on how I believe you should approach this, Amy. And I get it. This is such a great question and such a valid concern. And I hope uh, this has helped. You know, uh, Lily Claire Love, who was on the show a while back, posted uh, something a few hours ago that was perfect, um, talking about this very thing as well. Uh, synchronistic timing here. So I'm going to read this post from Lily that said, I had a dream last night that a woman who had so much contempt for Donald Trump and the dominant patriarchy he represents transformed and fell in love with him. She made love to him with all her being and she held him in her sweet breast. He softened and became a child. Then as they lay naked and coiled together, he looked up and suddenly fell off a cliff into blackness. She screamed and watched him fade into the void. She cried and shook in her loss. And then she remembered the love they shared is eternal. She was grateful and led a fully embodied life. 
I was thinking about this dream. The feminine strength is to fully be in this moment, to accept and inhale what is, inhale the greed, corruption, the men and women who take and rape the earth of her gifts, who do not respect their home or her medicine. Love them with all your feminine power. Hold them in your nurturing bosom and share with them the blessings of your womanly wisdom. And then watch their greed, corruption, and disrespect for her. Their mother, lover, daughter fall off the face of the earth and into the void of her wide open mouth. What a powerful, powerful statement, powerful dream, powerfully, you know, so poetic the way she described her interpretation. Uh, well done, Lily. <laughs> and uh, so what she's saying here, like, just bring love. The Those forces, that energy will, will fall into the void. It can't help but eat its own tail. It can't help but be transformed and transmuted. Love is the answer. Now, what was the question? As I say over and over again, right? It's always the same answer. And uh, I know there can be so many different uh, ways that's challenged. And thank, and I'm thankful for it, right? This is what's causing us to grow. This is what he is, uh, he is, you know, Donald Trump or this administration or the governments or the, the you know, the secret government or any of all that, any of those things you're focusing on, they're giving you the opportunity to truly know yourself, to know how powerful uh, you are and what love can do to transmute any of this uh, into you, you're an alchemist, right? You're transforming everything with love. And um, ah, what a wonderful day. What a wonderful episode. So, so grateful to share and connect with you all yet again. I do have a track I'd like to leave you guys with. As you know, I always have something high vibe uh, musically to leave you with. And I thought of a a song I heard many months back and uh, it, there was, uh, it's very cool. And I love the, the artist uh, is, you know, a poet, Actually, half of the song or the end of the song, it's spoken word. And there was a verse in there uh, that that stuck out to me at the time when I originally heard this months ago and it felt appropriate to play it now. This is Ariel Indigo. The song is Wonderland. You'll hear her say towards the end, I don't wish to crumble the power of those who would have you believe that you have none, that they control your fate. This I have faith they will accomplish all on their own. Till next time, Jenny Well. Also, before we queue up today's song, I wanted to remind you about the Game with the Universe on our website where you can choose the first number that comes to your mind and it'll pull up that episode number of the podcast. I've been saying this is a great way to co-create synchronicity and magic with your higher self for quite some time. And if you go to positivehead.com forward slash universe, there is a super fun and simple interface to play this game with your higher self. I firmly believe just by setting the intention to play in this way, it opens up the door for magic and it's a synchronistic way to hone in on nuggets of wisdom out of the huge catalog of episodes that are specifically appropriate for you at this time in your journey to becoming the next greatest and greatest version of yourself. And it also makes for a super fun way to spark the curiosity of friends and family by having them choose a number. So they'll hopefully go and check out their number as well, which I greatly appreciate because it helps us to spread the word about the podcast. Once again, the address is positivehead.com forward slash universe. And as a quick reminder, if you're curious to learn more about Purium Superfoods and why I take them almost every day, be sure to also check out positivehead.com forward slash transformation. On this journey of becoming the next greatest and grandest version of ourselves that we have all embarked upon, I cannot stress the importance of managing your physical vibration enough. And quite honestly, Purium has put together the simplest plan I've found to do so. I have my favorite, the Appleberry Shake, at least five times a week. Once again, to learn more about the Perium Transformation, go to positivehead.com forward slash transformation. Or if you want to keep it simple and just try out my favorite, the Appleberry Shake, you can go straight over to ishoppurium.com and be sure to use code POSITIVEHEAD for 25% off. I'll spell that for you. It's I-S-H-O-P-P-U-R-I-U-M.com. And be sure to use your Positive Head 25% coupon code. I used to dream of her. 
shrouded in technicolor flame, a rainbow body of pure, unequivocal love. Back then, I suppose I regarded her as a guardian of sorts, less a fae mother than an angel, which in a way still holds some measure of truth. And in the hazy, albeit mystic naivety of my youth, it failed to dawn that she was me. childhood sounds lashed out at me and colors spiraled into me from a place seemingly far away and yet tucked between creases of reality in my room as palpable as the folds of my downy cover then i didn't comprehend that i could exist in more than one place my soul my spirit my fractured sisters of self 
moving through a multi-dimensional map of space and time and perfectly choreographed chaos on the long cosmic runway back towards each other that after so much life I can still only partially begin to grasp reintegration the magnetic pull of the pieces of ourselves left behind ever yearning to find each other once again and ignite the process of melding with the remainder of consciousness the seemingly eternal pilgrimage to oneness that is all at once terrifying and more beautiful than anything in existence i see now who i am i am the instigator the system breaker an octarian activator of light vibrational realignment and upliftment flows from my lightning touch my rebel yell my angel song my intent for this world and her people bleeds forth from every cell of my being with the urgency of a prayer on the battlefield i do not wish to crumble the power of those who would have you believe that you have none that they control your fate this i have faith they will accomplish all on their own what i do intend however is for you and every earthling to recover the fire that was lost in your slavery to an imagined world one that lacks the spark necessary to seed the luscious majesty of your own evolution what i do intend is for you to fearlessly seek the path that will ignite a revolution within you i used to dream of her shrouded in technicolor flame a rainbow body of pure unequivocal love